But our first guest is on a mission to help us eliminate stress, depression, pain, and other common illnesses in our lives. Ina Siegel Segal is an internationally recognized speaker on wellness. And her book, The Secret Language of Your Body, is a bestseller that has been backed by doctors everywhere. And that alone is saying something because so often doctors in Western medicine don't look to this sort of wellness first. She is here to help us figure out what our body is trying to tell us. You know, you have a fabulous, fabulous story, first of all. How did you first discover your ability to discern, number one, what the real cause of chronic illness and pain is and how to fix it? Well, Mayor Beth, I was uh, very sick and I was actually going to see a lot of doctors and different practitioners, you know, physios, chiropractors. I had very bad back pain, digestive problems, skin problems. And when I was in my early 20s, I literally ended up in agony at the chiropractor's office with my back twisted and he just looked at me and he said oh you know your body is stuck and I said yeah I know this part what are you gonna do about it yeah. and he said nothing your body wants to be stuck go home and so I was so so mad when I was going home but what came to me was that I was born in Russia and I had to, when I came to Australia, which is where I live, I had to learn how to speak English and this is the second time in my life where I had to learn a new language, but this was going to be the secret language of my body and that's what I proceeded to do. I decided I'm going to heal myself. I started asking my body questions. I know it sounds strange, but I literally <laughs> well, did. How did you do that? I mean, yeah, how did you walk us through that process? Well, Tune into yeah, I started by breathing with the pain rather than against the pain. Okay. And then I started asking my body, well, are there feelings that are stuck in my body? And I started to feel different emotions, anger, frustration, hurt. And I was like, okay, I'm going to let this go as I'm breathing through this. Breathing it out? Yeah. Breathing yeah, it kind of, out? Yeah. Literally focusing on it, I put my hands on my back because your brain and your nervous system starts to connect to where the pain is. And you see athletes just, you know, holding their knee or something when they hurt themselves right. or, or children. And so I was doing that and then I was saying, well, what else is stuck here? You know, where is this coming from? And I actually realized that I had some ancestral memories from my grandparents who'd gone through the war and my parents who were struggling with, you know, financial issues and right. things like that. And I felt unsupported and I felt like I didn't know how to move on and I was overwhelmed in my life. So was your subconscious essentially you didn't even have any conscious awareness of all of this, but your subconscious is what yeah. really runs the ship, right? Exactly. So that was where it was coming from? It so was. how did you, you know, deal with it? Well, once I realized that I was saying, okay, I'm willing to let this go and, you know, I'm willing to move forward from this. And so I started really kind of focusing on and visualizing letting go of some of these issues and, and being clear and so literally within half an hour of exploring this I felt better I fell asleep the next morning when I wake up 70% of the pain was gone and wow. um, my my thing at the time was I want if I can get myself into high heels I know I'm gonna be well <laughs> and look at her now. Tell me a little bit about yeah. color healing I know yeah. you're in the book it talks about that yeah. as well so just briefly touch on that because I thought that was really fascinating yeah you know what I found w was great because I have children you know it was that children really understand color healing and everybody can understand it and so colors like green can help you with your nervous system and it can help you relax and calm down <laughs> colors like yellow can help you think clearer and great for people when they need to study or when they have digestive problems or even problems like arthritis you know colors like blue just calm you down or red like you're wearing some red they energize you and give you you know great for circulation great for pain relief okay do you actually hold a color palette for whatever you need let's say you're having a little struggling with some depression yeah would you would you hold that color that is right for that and meditate on it? Well, you can do something like that. You can close your eyes and visualize. I get people to really move their bodies if they're depressed or if they don't have a lot of energy, you know, and then I get them to rub their hands together because if you do that, you're actually heating your whole system up and then to place their hands next to each other and they start to feel that tingling sensation and then I go, okay, now visualize this red 
energy, you know, like as if you're holding a ball in your a hands. Big sphere. Yeah, a big sphere, you know. And then actually place your hands on the part of your body where you need that color and breathe it in. And so we're literally feeling and touching it and kind of taking it inside ourselves. You know, and then I really encourage people to move their bodies. You know, and so in the book I talk about different principles of healing, you know, how to move your body, how to eat, how to have fun. I think healing needs to be fun and enjoyable. What's the most astonishing healing story you have experienced? I mean, yours is pretty astonishing, but from an, uh, someone else. Okay, well, there was an amazing story with a child, actually, and his mother was very skeptical, and she called me because she said to me, you know, he's dying, and I'm saying goodbye. And I said, no, no, don't say goodbye yet, you know. And so I said, I'm going to actually start sending him some distance healing. And he had, um, he had a hole in his esophagus, and so he was actually, he, he was getting pneumonia, and he was getting sick all the time. So I asked her to, I gave her self-healing process and this is why I wanted to write this book, was because she used it for a couple of hours with her husband and he literally came back from almost dying and he recovered. And then I taught him how to, and he was six years old. Taught him how to do I taught him how to do healing work and he literally became better than he than all the other kids that he was going to kindergarten with and the teacher was just amazed at his recovery within a few months he was healthier than all the other kids wow. you know and I, and it was amazing well, if you want to talk a little bit more with Ina and have your book signed, she's going to be a Davis kid on Tuesday, October 19th, tomorrow at 6 p.m. So please go check it out. You can have a quick talk with her. Pick up the book. Fascinating, fascinating really? subject. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. New kind of health reform. I'll tell you what. Up Welcome back, everyone. My next guest has dedicated herself to helping people heal, but she says our bodies already contain all the medicine needed. Her name is Ina Siegel, and she's actually the author of The Secret Language of Your Body, The Essential Guide to Health and Wellness. This is the book right here. She's here with me this midday to talk all about the book and her ideas. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about this conversation. We talked earlier, and I think a lot of people probably will hear the title, The Secret Language of Your Body, and think, oh, she thinks the body can heal itself. Does she not need medicine? You do believe in medicine, though. I do. I think that there are times when, when medicine is really important, but I still think that no matter what medicine you're taking, you need to connect with your body. You need to be in touch with it. You need to understand how it's communicating with you, when it's telling you to rest, what food you need to eat, exercise, you know, breathing and just understanding what is going on with me why do I feel what I'm feeling and how can I act on this how do you know what specifically your body is telling you because you have feelings that come up you know and so when you feel unwell your body's saying to you hang on a second slow down what are you doing in your life you know when you feel depressed or you know it's like why you know I say to people let's explore what's happening inside you when you feel really joyful and happy you know your body communicates to you through emotions sensations and pain and so when we get to a stage of pain it's because our body has given us enough messages but we just ignore them and most mm. people go along their day just ignoring and we really need to start paying attention because of all the illnesses that are coming up and we can prevent so many of them but for a lot of people, the fundamental question is going to be, how do I know that my body is telling me something is really wrong? If I'm tired, it may be environmental. There are so many environmental factors that impact us. How do you know that, okay, this is something I really need to pay attention to? Because, all right, you might be tired that day, but what if you're tired for the next week and for the next month, you know? I mean, you have to pay attention, right? And so the first time you're tired, you might go, okay, maybe I need some rest. And then you, you know, and then do you take rest? Because how many people are stressed? And we re I mean, if we look at statistics, 80% of diseases, and this is not coming from me, it's coming from doctors and scientists, are, you know, are related to stress. And so 
the body is saying, I can't take this stress. I, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overloaded. And so we need to start looking at how to prevent stress on how to breathe, you know, because mm. most people breathe kind of up here. And so, you know, it's very shallow. And this is how you get anxiety and panic attacks. And, you know, and your body gets into fight or flight. And then you have all these hormones going in your body, like cortisol and, you know, and, and adrenaline. And so, your body is not working in the way that it's meant to work. And by actually calming ourselves down, by breathing, by slowing down, but you know, you can slow down and get a lot more done mm. because you're actually focused. You can enjoy your life more and you can have, you can be more productive and you, you feel good, you feel healthy. And it's not very difficult to do if we could just do a few little things. Hmm. How did you come up with this philosophy? Because it is a philosophy. Yes. Um, because I saw so many people, you know, and I discovered, because I was really unwell, and I had an epiphany of healing myself from back pain and digestive problems and skin condition, a skin condition called psoriasis. Mm. And what I realized was I had so many emotions that were suppressed in my body, and they weren't just coming from me. They were ancestral. They were coming from my family. My, my grandparents had been in the war, and they were traumatized. And I was just shocked that all of this was inside my body and by understanding this and breathing and feeling my emotions and changing my mind and my thinking and using the power of my mind I started changing and my body changed and I was amazed you know and the doctors that I had been seeing they were amazed and they actually asked me to come and work with them <laughs> Do you know what I mean? and, and they were sending me clients and they were huh. saying, you know, because I developed this ability to literally see and sense what's going on both inside my own body and other people's. And so these doctors were saying to me, you know, this is what I'm thinking. This is a diagnosis I'm giving. I want you to tell me what you're thinking and what you're getting. And your background isn't medicine. No, it what was journalism. Background? <laughs> my background was journalism. You know, I wanted to be a TV presenter. Okay. I wanted to do acting, you know, and so this was amazing for me you know being invited to work with these kinds of people and you know these doctors were sending their family members to for me to treat them and to help them and you know they were they were wanting to teach classes with me and telling me and asking me how to meditate and how to visualize and how to connect with the body now the reality is for a lot of people that sounds pretty far-fetched I mean it, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty abstract I know and and you know what, as I was saying to you before the interview, I've been skeptical myself, you know, and sometimes I still am, you know, hmm. but because of the results that I'm seeing and, you know, how I see people change when they start understanding what's going on inside their bodies, it's almost like the moment they acknowledge it, something changes and the body goes, hmm. oh, you've heard me. How does one start that process, though? I mean, because it really is. It sounds like it's a complete... Um, change of mindset. Well, it is, you know, and the first thing that you have to do is you have to go, you know what, I'm going to put my skepticism aside for a few minutes and I'm going to connect with my body. And so let's say you have some pain in a part of your body and let's say you have pain in your chest. You know, okay. I mean, a lot of people get colds and things like that. And I encourage people to connect and touch their body, you know, and so I say, place your hands on your chest breathe into that area and by breathing slower and deeper you start to go oh what am i feeling and so i start saying to people what are you feeling are you feeling numbness there mm -hmm. are you feeling anger are you feeling overwhelmed overload stress what are you feeling and once you start recognizing that you go okay let let me breathe slow and deep and re relax and so sometimes it's really hard to relax and i say to people tighten your body and then relax it and breathe slowly and deeply. And by that, you start relaxing, you know. And then, you know, I think you mentioned color, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I write about color healing. Right. And so what I say to people is just by visualizing different colors, your body can slow down and start healing. What specific color should one vi visualize? Okay, well. I would imagine brights? Yes. You know? <laughs> I've already got your secrets. <laughs> you do, you know, and it's like, you know, you know, both of us are wearing kind of gray and black and you, you've got some color, which is great. But, you know, and sometimes the scars are fine, but you still need brightness, you know. Mm. And so green is a fantastic color for healing the heart, for working with fear, for working with stress. 
orange is great for anything to do with colds, you know, or immune system. Mm -hmm. In fact, what I say to people, you know, one of the easiest ways to work with your immune system and boost it is you, ha you have this thymus gland here in the middle of your kind of breastbone okay. and you just tap it and you smile. And even smiling and humor can help you heal and it boosts your whole immunity. You know, so, so there's some really simple ways of doing it. And, you know, red is a great color for anyone who's depressed and for anyone who has pain in their body or when they, you know, when they feel like that they, they have lack of energy, it just brightens you up. Hmm. you know, and boost your, your, your energy. Well, folks, those are some things you may want to try. Thank you so much for coming by and sharing with us. It was a pleasure. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. If you'd like to hear some more about her techniques or read her new book, you can always go to Davis Kid Booksellers in East Memphis. Tomorrow, starting at 6 o'clock, she's going to have a book signing there. You can also get more information on our website, myeyewitnessnews.com. When you get there, just click on the Find It link, which is on the right-hand side of our homepage.